Good morning, everyone. Today we are going to review quadratic transformations. This is basically the last thing that we learned before we left for spring break. So to do quadratic transformations, first you have to know what the quadratic parent function looks like. So on this slide, we have the quadratic parent function of f of x equals x to the second power, and it's going to look like this line that's here. So notice that the vertex is at 0, 0, and that it is opening upwards. So I know there's no arrows, but you can think of this as going up forever and ever. When you do a transformation, a transformation is a type of change. What's going to happen is that you're going to have a number either in the spot where A is at, the spot where H is at, or the spot where K is at. So we're going to take a look at what happens when you put numbers in these spots. So starting with A, if there is a number right in front of the parentheses, so it depends on what type of number it is. If A is a number that is bigger than 1, so if you look at this example on the left side, if you look at the equation, a is one-third, so one-third is smaller than one. And if you look at the picture, the green line is fatter, or it's wider than the gray dotted line. So we call this a vertical compression. which means that your graph will look wider. Then for the example that's on the right side, I use the number three, you can see in the picture there. So three is bigger than one. When the number is bigger than one, we call this a vertical stretch. And if you look at the picture, the green parabola is narrower than the gray dotted line. So when it's a vertical stretch, it'll look narrower. Okay, for the next slide. So still talking about A, but this time I wanna know what happens to the graph when a is negative. So here it's negative 1. When you graph it, you don't need to actually put 1. You could just put the negative sign. So what happened is that it flipped over, and we call this a reflection. But you have to be specific. What line is it reflecting over? So if you look at this picture, if I had to hold up a mirror, the mirror would be on that line, and that line is the x-axis. So reflection over the x-axis. Okay, so now what happened when I put a number where h is at? So you have to be careful with h and k. People tend to get these confused. h is inside the parentheses. The other weird thing about h is that in the equation, there is a minus sign. So by default, you're always going to do the opposite of what it says. So if h is negative, like the way it is here, when you put it into the parentheses, it would look something like this, x minus negative h. Though we never write it like that, what we're going to do is put a plus sign instead of minus negative. So that's how you are going to see it. When you have an equation, there's going to be a plus sign. So if you look at the graph on the left side, you see how it has plus 3. So let's see what happened to our graph. So starting at the vertex of the parent function, it went 1, 2, three spaces this direction. So it went three spaces to the left. 
So when h is negative, meaning that you see a plus sign, you are going to shift to the left. So in the other direction, so meaning that h is positive, only again, when they write that inside the parentheses, it would be something like x minus positive h, which that is weird. We don't ever do that. It would just be the minus sign. So when you see the minus sign only. So looking at the vertex, it goes one, two, three spots that direction. So when you have a minus sign, you are going to shift to the right. And then last, what happens when you have a number in the k spot? So what makes k different than h is that k is not inside the parentheses, it is on the outside. And this one is more straightforward. So when k is negative, so when you have minus k at the end, so looking at the vertex, you go from the gray to the purple, or in, in this case it looks pink. One, two, three, but down. So when you have a minus sign, you are going to shift down. Which means that when you have a plus sign, again starting from the parent function, one, two, three, but we went this direction. So when you have a plus sign, you're going to shift up. So now let's do some examples. So this one says, what transformations took place from the quadratic parent function to g of x? So every time you see a number, we're going to say, what does that number mean? So this 3, this 4, and this 2. It is basically going in order. A is 3. And since 3 is bigger than 1, this is going to be a vertical stretch. It's going to look narrower. Okay. And then with H, it equals, remember that you always do opposite. So X equals positive four which means that we are going to shift 4 to the right. And then last, k equals 2. Since 2 is positive, we're going to shift 2 units up. So looking at the parent function there, I'm going to try to draw my best estimation of what this would look like. So I always do the shifting first. So starting from the vertex, we're going to shift 4 to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then shift 2 up, 1, 2. So that is where our new vertex should be. I'm going to go ahead and draw a dot there. And then it should be narrower than what the parent function is. It, look, it should look skinnier. So I would say kind of like that. So let's check our answer on the next slide. So yeah, we were pretty darn close with our picture and those are my transformations. So one more example. What transformations took place from the quadratic parent function 2k of x. So again, we're going to go in order. This is our a value. So let's think about this. 
a is equal to negative one-half. So because one-half is less than one, that's going to be a vertical compression. which means that our graph is going to be wider than normal. But the other thing is that A is negative. Negative. Let's write it like this. So that means that we're going to reflect it over the x-axis and it's going to look upside down. Okay, then for H, we have plus 3. But we know that with h, it's always the opposite. So instead of plus, h is actually going to be negative 3, which means that we are going to shift 3 to the left. And then that minus 1 at the end is our k. So since it's negative, we are going to shift 1 down. So if I needed to draw this, starting at the vertex, we're shifting 3 to the left, 1, 2, 3, and 1 down. So that is where our new vertex would be. Now we have to make sure that we reflect, which means that it's going to open downwards and that it's wider than normal. So something kind of like that. So let's check our answer. And there it is. Hey, thank you for watching the video. Make sure that you like and subscribe.